great. Great. Uh, so uh, thank you all for coming uh, to this session. Uh, I'm a DECA Network Research and Protect Group Manager uh, at Checkpoint. Together with me is Ori Hamama, a Network Research Team Leader uh, in my organization. Um, today we'll discuss the interesting story of uh, Dark Robot, which is uh, an ongoing and evolving campaign targeting a PHP servers, including uh, a multi-layer uh, attack chain and Ori, can you click? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Can you click okay. the... Yes. Yeah. Great, so um, regarding the agenda for today, so we'll share a demo uh, and, a, and, a, and a campaign overview. Uh, as well as elaborate on the attack infection chain, including all the, sta all the stages within the attack chain and the relevant uh, uh, pieces of code relevant to this campaign. We'll also discuss a bit about the malware capabilities associated with this campaign. And uh, we will uh, show you how we connected the dots and share insights on our threat and hunting uh, processes, which is a significant part of our uh, usual processes. Uh, and then, of course, like every, every good story, we'll discuss on uh, the threat actors behind uh, this story, which provides some uh, unique and interesting angle uh, to, to all the, those pieces in the puzzle. Um, great, so, uh, Ori, can you click again? Great. Uh, so a bit about uh, ourselves. Uh, so I'm Network Research uh, and Protection Group Manager at Checkpoint. Um, in my group, we conduct ongoing uh, threat landscape analysis uh, and evaluating new attacks, campaigns, vulnerabilities, and push and uh, to push forward our uh, network uh, core security products, IPS, antibot, and application control. Um, my background includes managing teams in the cybersecurity domain in various positions uh, within the R and D uh, um, world. Um, in general, I can uh, say that I have a strong passion for network protocols. I'm not sure why though, but uh, I mean, I really love the, the techy uh, uh, part of it. Um, and I love to play soccer. Uh, I'm not that good at it, but uh, I'm mm -hmm. trying. Um, my academic background uh, includes a master's in my mathematics, which is a very good tool uh, when we try to analyze risks in, uh, in our domain. Um, great, Ori, you can uh, introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us to this session. Uh, I'm a network sec uh, security research team at the Checkpoint, and I served in the IDF Intelligence Corps uh, 8200 unit in various research and development position. I'm writing code from uh, the age of 12 and has worked at various startups and enterprises specialized in web security and network technologies and brewing craft beer. <laughs> I did so. Okay, at least I, uh, I do some sports, you just drink beer. <laughs> uh, I, I, do, I drink a beer, no sport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, so uh, let's dive uh, into the campaign. Uh, so in general, we can say this is a multi-layer and evolving campaign targeting uh, a PHP servers basically all PHP servers, which is one insight I would like you to take from this presentation. I will discuss this uh, in the, by the end. Um, so the multi-stages include um, leveraging uh, file upload vulnerability uh, we feel with several obfuscation and manipulations. Uh, and the end game here is to create a significant bot infrastructure leverage for various uh, purposes such as monetization and shutting down critical services. Um, and this campaign was implemented by Dark Group Friends, and this is why we named it Dark Group Bot, uh, a known hackers group that offers uh, various services uh, that we will discuss and elaborate later on. Um, Ori, you can go. Okay, great all started. In usual, we monitor new leads from our sensor and decided if we will start to deep investigating or not. But in this case, our research is starting with this log that scouts our attention. The log presents HTTP requests to our customer server. 
The request was to PDF the PHP path. And the request arriving with large blob in query parameter that looks like base 64 blob. We need to we notice that a base 64 blob is being transferred in an argument OST. Uh, after we de decoded the blob, we see some bash commands to download two AFF files, granting execute permission and, and running the files. After this command, finish to run. The final command is remove all AFF files that save in, in temporary folder. Now we are drilled down in the payload and extracting interesting parts. Okay, so we started analyzing the commands to get more clues about the attack type. And we started with the pklxvic domain. Uh, in a quick search of the domain in the DNS info, showed us that the last activity in the domain were sent and happened around two weeks before our log time. And we also searched the history of the attacker source IP, and we have found that this IP related to DNS. And the domain name is lubrisbina.com. And we have checked this domain in, history, in DNS history too. And we were surprised to see that the last activity there happened also at the same day. We can assume that this is an unfair first indicator that the campaign is live and as a new activity. Okay, after the investigating the, uh, of the decoded the base 64 blob, and our next step was to trace the attack flow, we downloaded both AFF files and we discovered uh, that those files are actually PHP and Perl files. We also came to assume it by the PHP and Perl command in base64 blob. But why the attacker used the AFF files? Uh, we have checked about AFF files type and we discovered that AFF file type is spell check dictionary file used by Kingsoft WPS office and Apache Open Office. It's mean it's not related to our vector attack. And so we can assume that that's the different file extension is meant to avoid detection and confuse. Now we started to investigate the relevant files. Okay, the malware is an IRC bot. The bot is using the protocol to communicate with the CNC server and also using it for some of the attack. Part of the interesting capabilities of the malware are running shell commands on the affected uh, system. The malware brings to connect any FTP server and file output and download methods. Uh, the malware received air commands from IRC related actions can be used to infect other IRC server and more. In addition, we have found an interesting capability of this malware, DDoS attack. Uh, DDoS is distribute, of Dan uh, distribute denial of service and, that, and the vector attack is a cyber attack and the purpose of the attack to make machine or network resource or service will be unavailable. We have many types of DDoS attack in the wild, but this malware implemented part of methods. Uh, the list of DDoS methods that malware implemented is the first one is HTTP flow. What is HTTP flow? Sending get or post request and force the browser to allocate the maximum resources as possible. Uh, TCP flow. Uh, Thin flow exploit the TCP three way handshake where the attacker sent TCP SIM packets and never replied to the server with ACK. UDP flow. Flowed with random packets of UDP data ground. And uh, proxy flow. The attacker harvests a list of public available proxy server and recruits them into attacking the victim. Uh, CTCP flow. CTCP is a client-to-client -client protocol related to IRC, a protocol who is implemented in almost every IRC client. Such attack will make the connection to stop and disconnect the client. And the final one is the URL bomb, slow attack. The attacker will send HTTP request pieces slowly. If the request is not completed, the server is keeping the resource busy and the 
if the attacker sent enough HTTP packet then, uh, to HTTP server, then the HTTP server could be to crash. Okay, uh, we also have found that comments were, were writing in Italian in AFF files. Uh, okay, now we extract, extracted for you the malicious parts from the code and you can see the interesting parts. Okay, the first one is the uh, DDoS help me for the attackers. Look how much easy to send DDoS commands to, uh, C, uh, from SCNC server and cache any, any machine or uh, service do you want. And the second is uh, FTP upload and download uh, to victim server. The manual can to download any files from any FTP server and the manual get the commands from the CNC. The third, is executing shell commands. The attacker can execute shell commands on the affected machine by the commands are sent by CNC server. Look how much easy. Uh, we can assume that this part is, is the useful part in this campaign. All these methods is significant capabilities and bring to attacker a lot of power and control. But the big question is, if this file is a new malware or just a new variant of malware. Okay, follow up our malware, malware analysis and threat hunting in our OSINT data source. We noticed that variants of this malware are widely spread online. But now the big question is which vulnerability that attacker use? The last question still open, is what the vulnerability is that's used by the attacker? For to answer this question, we try to figure out what are the targets of the, the attacker. Uh, we are searching common pattern in our sensor logs, and we have found the path targets of the attacker is a pdf.php. Okay, we have a one clue, but what is the product that's contained pdf.php file? And uh, why we didn't find any information in our hosting about it. Uh, okay, uh, if we will find the product that maybe, uh, that's maybe we can to assume it, what is the vulnerability? Uh, but in final, we tried to send expert request to this path and we were surprised to discover that the following expert response is dark proof friends uh, after analysis in our OSINT source with the unique name Data uh, Dark Proof Friends, we have found that this uh, this payload is web shell initial web shell. This web shell matched to our sensor logs of this attack, and we can conclude that the attacker uploaded the following web shell on the victim server. The code define a get parameters called OSC and execute decompressed base64 string. We also detected another version, this PHP backdoor, used by the attacker, which utilities get parameters called ANON. That was defined in the web shell code. But still, we didn't, we didn't answer the question: what is the vulnerability? Based on our research, the victim server host content management sites such as WordPress and Joomla. This platform has multiple unscripted file upload vulnerabilities in which attacker can upload malicious file uh, to the vulnerable server. One of these vulnerabilities an exploit created and published by dark proof friends. Based on their previous exploit, the, the, uh, this group of attacker is very familiar with this type of vulnerability. <coughs> we can assume that the attacker used an uh, unstricted file upload vulnerability to establish their backdoor on the victim server. Okay, so maybe it's the vulnerability, but what is the unstricted file upload vulnerability? Uh, many applications allow uh, users to upload creation file to their server such as images or documents. This file can put the system at risk 
if they are not properly handled. A remote attacker can send specifically crafted requests to a vulnerable server and upload an unrestricted file while bypassing the server file extension check. This can be result in arbitrary code execution on the affected system. Okay, until now, I explained about the campaign parts, but now let's summarize it. An attacker start, starting with scanning PHP legacy server, such as WordPress and Joomla sites with old version in the wild. An attacker used file upload vulnerabilities uh, for upper initial web shell uh, for future execution commands. Uh, attacker sends to act server with the initial web shell, the, ba the base64 payload that installed the, uh, the malware files, viewer.aff as PHP file execution and waf.aff as per file execution. The third stage is the file starting to work and they are communicating with CNC in IRC protocol. Now the malware can receive commands from IRC protocol and waiting to the attacker. But now the big question is what the attacker are doing really with this botnet and who is the attacker? Uh, great, thank, uh, thanks, Ori. Um, so, like every uh, um, analysis that we conduct to such attacks and campaigns, we try to ask ourselves what are the threat actors behind, behind this uh, story. Uh, this is basically a significant part to understand the bigger context of the attack, as well as understanding the motivation behind the attack. And in some cases, for example, like this case, it enables us to understand uh, to better understand the techie part. For example, we can see that uh, those threat actors try to monetize it through uh, selling those uh, services, so those DDoS services uh, uh, and traffic. And this is correlated with what we have seen in the malware capabilities. So just to give you some glimpse of how we, we do that. Uh, so, in this, uh, in this specific campaign, we had a really, uh, really straightforward indicator, the dark true uh, friends, with, which we have seen in various places within the code, uh, whether this is, was on the web shell uh, or in other files, and this was pretty uh, a strong indicator for us to, uh, to uh, further investigate. Um, and We've managed through our uh, um, deep web analysis to understand that those are uh, the dark friends is part of a, a knackers group, um, basically that was active during the years. We've also uh, managed to, to see in the code that they have left comments in Italian, which is correlated with what we have seen uh, through their activity. Um, so basically this is an Italian, Italian uh, hackers group. Um, or we can click. Great. Uh, in addition to that, we have managed to, um, to see that um, Dark of France uh, has been active uh, throughout the years, as well as in this example where they act uh, Italian news website. Um, and it seems like they have mixed motivations that they, uh, uh, that they activated during the years. For example, uh, in our case, we can, based on what we have uh, uh, told already, uh, the motivation was around the uh, monetization and conducting, again, the, the significant bot infrastructure in order to uh, conduct uh, uh, DDoS attacks. Um, again, Ori, can you click? Great. Um, in addition to that, um, Dark of France, um, this group was pretty active uh, in the relevant attack forums. And in this example, for instance, we can see that they actually um, opened the shop to sell their, uh, their capabilities. Um, I ca you can pay them in Bitcoin uh, and they will sell you um, um, access to bots as well as uh, traffic uh, services. Um, and you can see they even made this uh, nice uh, uh, um, UI. Uh, Ori, can you click? Great, for example, um, 
they provide this uh, friendly uh, um, brochure, including the various things that they can offer. For example, the ability to, uh, to install files on their bots and share with you the relevant uh, access uh, to leverage it, as well as other, uh, other services. Um, and like we mentioned, this is using uh, the, the IRC protocol. Um, and basically, we can see that they have taken it to the next level in terms of uh, uh, selling it, leveraging uh, the, the campaign that uh, they've conducted. Uh, so if we try to summarize uh, what we've seen so far, so basically, um, this was a really interesting campaign in terms of how it evolved during time and the uh, multiple layers within that capture. Uh, there are several things that I would like you to take from this presentation. The first thing is that, um, as Ori mentioned earlier, this campaign targeted old PHP servers. Old. It means that um, um, you can see that although those, those versions were relevant a few years ago, this campaign was uh, in 2020. Uh, this is a good evidence of the importance of patching your, uh, your uh, services and servers and uh, products that you use. Um, and it doesn't mean that those couldn't be leveraged in a few years from now, like this example. Um, and again, also in 2020, this is a significant challenge uh, for us to understand that we need to, uh, to make sure we're fully patched. Um, and this is one thing. Uh, the, the other thing is focused on um, the, the multi-layer part. I mean, today's uh, uh, attacks are composed of several layers, and we have seen, and we basically see it in every campaign that we investigate. I mean, it's not one, uh, it doesn't include one attack chain, for example, just the initial uh, access, and in some cases, it, in, it includes various vulnerabilities that are being leveraged. Um, and this is another thing. I mean, when we try to understand, for example, from our side, how we can, um, we can protect from such uh, uh, attacks. We understand that we have to have some uh, uh, holistic approach, including various uh, um, aspects. Um, for example, the, uh, the file level vulnerability protection, uh, uh, as well as protecting against the post infection uh, scenario within that attack chain. Um, and this is another significant insight. Um, and uh, a third insight is that perspective, in order to better understand the attack, and for example, in this attack as well as other attack, we try to understand who is the threat actor behind it and what is it trying to do. Uh, this is a significant part of our understanding of what's going on here. And in this example, we can see that in order to connect the dots between um, all the stages and all the uh, uh, levels in this attack, uh, we needed to understand what the first actor and what they're trying to do. Uh, and this is, was a significant part of our understanding here. Um, so, Ori, would you like to add something? No, you expect Great, right, so uh, regarding uh, um, IOCs that are relevant for this uh, uh, attack, so um, you can see here, uh, as well as we do have a dedicated uh, publication over it, uh, you can find it through uh, a Checkpoint Research blog, in which we share insights on attacks, vulnerabilities, uh, and basically you can find it also on the media. Um, um, <clears throat> And we would be happy to answer to your questions. And um, it was a pleasure on our side. You can see. Thank you for everyone to, to attend to this session.